This is the next line. You can see as well, by the way, that these two lines are parallel. I mean, they're 90% they're the same, if not more, uh, which is a sort of flag for you when you see a question. They can state the question in either of these ways. They can tell you, hey, the parametric equations are these. Or they could say, uh, a locus is defined with this point, with this set of coordinates. That's the x, that's the y. So that tells you the same amount of information. Okay. All right, now, now we come to this next bit that we're talking about here, tangents and normals, right? It says the equation of the tangent, the equation of the normal. So we can go ahead and write these down. Tangent and normal. Write them down for me. Okay, now when you see something on the reference sheet, what we're trying to say to you is, hey, you can use this, you can use this for free, um, which is kind of nice because this is some work to actually derive. However, that doesn't mean that you can just not know where this come from, comes from. Uh, let me illustrate this for you. Go back on the, um, on the reference sheet, I want you to turn back to um, the previous page, the previous page, and uh, it's a two unit page. And you'll notice on the left-hand column, it says, what's the, what's the very top thing in the left-hand column? It says differentiation from first principles, okay? Now, what follows underneath that is a whole bunch of things about differentiation, okay? Now, we give you all of these laws down the bottom, all of these rules, and we say, yes, you can use these. You can just have them for free. Um, don't worry about proving them. However, we also say you've got to be able to do stuff from first principles, and I can guarantee you this is in your exams that you've already done, and in the final HSC exam, it's almost a given that you'll have a one or two mark question that is a first principles type question. So what does this mean? Here's your, um, pick up your annotating color, okay? These two equations here, you can quote these without proof. You can quote them without proof, but, and here comes the nuance, and I never used to explain this very clearly and so students got confused. But, sometimes you do have to prove them. <laughs> sometimes you do have to prove them. You must be ready to prove them. So I'm trying to draw this comparison to first principles. You learn first principles, and then you learn rules that, rec that sort of um, mean you don't need first principles anymore. Thank God, because first principles is very slow, right? But that doesn't mean we say now ignore first principles. You still have to be ready to use first principles, okay? And in exactly the same way, yes, you can use these. You don't have to prove them every single time. But sometimes you are required to prove them. The question will state it. It will just blank out, say, prove that the equation of the tangent's this. Or prove that the equation of the normal is this. And you'll say, what? They said that we could just quote this. And like, well, sometimes you can, and sometimes you can't. That's why I'm highlighting it. So I want you to look at this guy here, just this first one. I want you to have a look at the form that it's in. This is a straight line. Tangents are straight lines. What is the form that this has been provided to you in? This is, I, I can see a gradient right there. By the way, the gradient is t. That's that's, that's not a coincidence, is it? Okay. Um, the gradient is here. What's this guy? This constant on the end is not just anything in the form of a straight line. That'll be the y-intercept, right? Okay, so it's in point, sorry, it's in slope intercept form. So where will I have gotten this from? If I were required to prove this, what would I have done before this line to get to here? I'd need the gradient. Sorry, I'm breaking my own rule, third color. I'm finding the gradient. And what's the other piece of information that's going to go into there? It makes it a tangent, right? Well, it's got the same gradient, and it goes through the same point. That's all that's required. It is not hard to find the equation of the tangent. It's just a little bit of work. Point, gradient, off you go, OK? The normal looks terrible. It looks much more intimidating. but. It's not. What would you do differently to find the equation of the normal? Someone else hasn't said anything yet this morning. Come on, this one's not so hard. You can do it. 
Yeah, to, to get to the normal, right? What makes a normal a normal? Okay, it still goes through the same point, but the gradient will not be the same, will it? It will be not just the reciprocal, it'll be the negative reciprocal. Right? Once you take that guy and do exactly the same thing, you will come up with this equation, no problem. Okay? So, you can quote these, you can, that's why they're there, unless they specifically ask you to prove, in which case you have to be ready to do this. Thankfully, it's not that terrible. Um, people had to do that all the time back in the day. Okay? All right, now, the last thing that we're going to write down uh, is the focus of what we're going to look at today. <laughs> focus, see what I did there? Um, Underneath there, it says at, and it's actually not the last thing that's on the page. Um, under this heading, we just won't get to it today. It says this. Now, think, think, before you have a look at what's next. Look at what they've just said. This tells you something important, right? Here, you're in parameter land. Right? It's like, look, there's t's there, okay? And that's why subsequently there are t's in your equation, okay? But then they get to this and they're like, oh, there's no t's anymore. There's no parameter. So this is not talking about parametric forms anymore. What forms is it talking about? It's talking about Cartesian forms, right? Okay? So we can still find the equation of the tangent and the normal without the parameter. It's just a little bit trickier. So let's write these results down first. And then what we're going to devote our time to today is to actually proving these results, which ends up being quite ingenious. So here's what we've got. X, X1. By the way, um, just to close this off, right? I, I wanted to review this because we haven't done this for a little while, but I actually encourage you, see what we just did, what we just did? I would encourage you by the end of the HSC course, you should be able to do what I just did, what I just walked you through for the entire reference sheet. Um, that's not because you, like, you don't get to bring all of this stuff in, but that way, like when I look at the reference sheet, I don't just see this, this triggers all of that in my head, okay? That's the point of a memory aid, okay? Uh, and the same thing should happen for all of the differentiation stuff and all the trig stuff and all of the yada, yada, yada. 